Have you ever been really frustrated trying to get air out of your clutch master cylinder and slave cylinder setup? I have too, but I got a really cool trick on how to do it. And with the LT1 throw up bearing slash slave cylinder setup, it's increasingly difficult, especially when you replace it with brand new and you don't bench bleed it. We did not bench bleed it, but we have a remote bleeder. I'm gonna show you a really, really cool trick on how to easily bleed this system using a very simple vacuum setup. What we have here is a BMW 6 Series with a LT1 and a TR6060 mated up together. Now, the master side of this is a filled master reservoir to a BMW master cylinder that goes to the clutch, that pushes the fluid out to the TR6060 slave slash throwout bearing setup. And that has a remote uh, bleeder right here. And the remote bleeder is supposed to uh, make it a lot easier to bleed and it doesn't seem to have worked very well so far. Let me show you what the pedal feels like after a couple of hours of attempting to bleed the traditional way. So currently, you push the pedal and it goes down all the way to the floor. If you can continue, continue to try pumping, you can bleed and get a little bit of air out every time, but it's still never enough, and for some reason, air always gets trapped back in the system. Because the air gets trapped in the top of the master cylinder, which kind of faces down, the pedal is pushing down on the master cylinder, but there's always that top part of the master cylinder that, that actually has air continually trapped in it. We gotta suck that air out, and we're gonna use a vacuum bleeder from the master reservoir, and we're gonna suck all the air out of the entire system. So this bleeder here, has a bleed screw right on there. We're gonna tighten everything up to make sure that the, the system is completely sealed. So this is an OEM Tools 25136 bleeder and it's got the little reservoir here that helps to prevent the fluid from going back into the vacuum bleeder itself. And of course the other end is a really small tip and this tip is gonna be sticking into the master cylinder reservoir where I'm gonna then suck anything that I can get out of that. Now I'm gonna get a lot of fluid, I know, and I'm gonna keep that reservoir filled, but I'm hopefully gonna be getting bubbles at the same time. You stick this in, and it should, it's rubber, so it has a good interference fit. There's a bubble. There's another one. There's another one. Looks like it's taking about 25 in inches of mercury to get these air bubbles out. Well, there's a lot of them coming out now. A lot of them. Look at that, huh? Wow. Now, before we pump the pedal again, let's hedge our bets and also use that vacuum bleeder on the actual slave cylinder side and stick that in there and pull the fluid from the slave cylinder because that's really where I think a lot of that fluid is also trapped. So we'll hedge our bets. We'll hit it from the master cylinder side on the reservoir, which we just did, and we'll also do it on the slave cylinder side through the remote bleeder. Okay, so we'll take the bleeder out here. Oh, geez, always. And stick this guy right inside. And you can even pull on a little bit to know that it's making a really good rubber connection. And then you wanna start pulling fluid out. And you see it's gonna start pulling a lot of fluid out. So you wanna make sure that your master cylinder is constantly filled, because if it starts sucking air in, you're gonna be back to square one. There's some more air bubbles coming out right there. More air bubbles coming out. And the, the reservoir is dipping down. Fill it up before it gets too low. Basically, we're just transferring fluid from the master cylinder through the system, through the vacuum, and into the reservoir, this reservoir here. And you can see that there are a lot of bubbles that are still happening here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll press this button here, even though we still have 20 inches of mercury here, and we'll slowly let the pressure go. This is completely filled with fluid, so we know that even if we're letting the pressure go, that it's not gonna suck air back in. Um, and now the, there's, the system is relieved of pressure. And we'll put the bleeder back on and give it a little snug. Now let's see what the pedal feels like now. So I was doing this while, while the pedal was on the floor. Oh, feeling a little bit better. There we go, look. The spring isn't necessarily pushing it against the floor. You push the pedal and it goes down all the way to the floor. Actually, there is some resistance to it. And actually, as I'm continuing to pedal, the resistance is getting harder and harder. As you can see now, that's basically it. It's kind of springing back on its own. 
Yeah, let's do this each on each side one more time, and I think we're gonna be in great shape. Now that we've iteratively bled the system from both the master cylinder reservoir, pulling the bubbles out from the master cylinder, and also from the slave cylinder by pulling bubbles out from the remote bleed line, now it's time to check our pedal. Um, and sometimes when you check the pedal, you need to pump it a number of times. Um, oh wow, looks like it's uh, back here. Oh yeah, look at that, wow. Oh, and it feels good too. You just let it go and it detents right where it should. And you kind of know that it's actually good because when you press it, when you press a clutch pedal, you press like the first part of the, 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 the pedal, right? You press this part. And that's when there's the beginning of the friction point, the resistance uh, within the flywheel to clutch assembly. And if you keep on pressing, you kind of get that little like, ah. Uh, you know, that's how you know that this is actually a completely bled system because it is completely disengaging the clutch right there. Um, and, uh, and I think that this is actually in great shape. We got a really nice, healthy clutch. We got a really healthy clutch system. So thanks a lot guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something. My name is Frank Macaluso from Garageaholic. If you want more tips and tricks just like this throughout this build and other builds that I do, please subscribe, like, and comment. Guys, I'm out of here. Later.